Welcome to this new video, today we continue with the code from the previous video. We are going to create, update and delete the users of the Spring Authorization Server. We start in a browser window and open 127.0.0.1 port 8080. Now we can display a list of the users and authorities. After we have logged in with user and password, we get a list of all users in the database. The first thing we can do is create a new user. We choose a new username and password. Click on Enabled and choose one or more roles and click on Submit. We now see the list again with an additional user. If we now open a new private window we can log in with this new user. We can update the user. For example, we can choose a different role. And we can delete the user. We start with the code of the Spring Resource Server, because nothing has changed in the code of the Spring Authorization Server. We have three records, the user record with username, password, enabled and the list of authorities. Authority record with username and authority. And the role record with one role field. Nothing has changed in the authority service. In the role service we only have find all roles to retrieve the roles from the database. The user service has changed considerably, we started with the series of SQL commands. Find all users. Find user by username. Create user. Create authority. Delete user. Delete authority. And exist username. Then we load the JDBC client and the password encoder with constructor injection. And the following methods. Find all users. Find user by username. The create user is a bit more extensive. First we check whether a user already exists with that username. A username may only appear once in the table. Then we create the user, make sure that we convert the password to be crypt with the password encoder. Finally, we create the authorities. In the user update we first delete the user and then create a new user with the adjusted data. Finally, we have delete user. First we check whether the user exists, then we delete the authorities and finally we delete the user. The controller classes are simple in design. In the user controller we make the user service available and we have get all users. Get user by username. Create user. Update user. And delete user. In the authority controller we only have get all authorities. And the role controller has all roles. We can now move on to the Spring OAuth 2 client code. We now look at the code of the Spring Boot client. In the POM XML file we have Spring Boot Starter 3.2.0 and Java version 21. The dependencies Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 client Spring Boot Starter Web Spring Boot Starter Validation Spring Boot Starter Timeleaf and Timeleaf Extra Spring Security 6. In the application YAML file we have server port 8080. Application name. Virtual threads. Timeleaf cache. The configuration for OAuth 2 security. 
Spring MVC Hidden Method Filter The address of the Spring Resource Server And the logging level The main class is standard In the Security Config class we have a security filter chain bean with the configuration of PKCE Authorize HTTP requests OAuth2 login and OAuth2 client with defaults. The code to communicate with the Spring Resource Server starts with the user client interface. The interface has been expanded compared to the previous video. Get users. Get user by username. Create user. Update user. Delete user. Get authorities. And get roles. The REST client config, this class is more extensive than normal. Because we want to use REST client to send an OAuth2 bearer token, we used an interceptor. Spring Boot will automatically address this in one of the next updates. We start by retrieving the client ID and REST client URL from the application YAML file. We create a client registration. Create a client HTTP request interceptor with the OAuth2 authorized client manager. Create a REST client with the builder. Then comes the REST client adapter. And the HTTP service proxy factory. And return the user client. In the auth REST client interceptor which implements client HTTP request interceptor, we override one method intercept. Here we retrieve the access token and create an authorization header with the bearer token. The user record with username, password, enabled and a list of authorities. We also have two validation annotations because the username and password cannot be empty. The authority record with username and authority. The role record has two fields. ID and role. The ID field is needed to guarantee the order of the roles. The user service is very simple. Get users. Get user by username. Create user. Update user. And delete user. In the role service we convert the data to a list of strings, we no longer need the ID field here. The authority service is unchanged. The last classes are the controllers. Home controller for the index page. The user controller has been expanded with a series of new methods. Get users. Get user by username. We use the user form endpoints for the form to create new users or to update users. We return the same HTML form every time. Then create user follows with a redirect to the form if there is an error or the users list if all goes well. Update user here too with a redirect. And delete user. The authority controller has not changed from the previous video. The last block are the HTML pages. The index HTML page is very simple with four links. Home, Users, Authorities, and Login. In the Users HTML page we use Timeleaf to convert the list of users into readable text. We show the username with a button to update or delete the user. The Authorities HTML page shows a list of all authorities. In the user by username HTML page we show all data of the selected user. And we use the user form to create a new user or update an existing user. The th method is important here, we can choose from the controller between a post method or put method. The last file is the very simple style CSS file. That's it for this video. Thank you for following and supporting our channel. All questions, comments and new ideas are always welcome in the comments below this video.
All code is also always available on the GitHub website. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel, that way you won't miss any new content. Thank you.